Hello everybody, um, today we're going to be doing our final, well, starting our final poem um, that we're going to do this year, you may be pleased to know. Um, that leaves two more poems that we won't have studied um, that we'll pick up next year. Um, so today we're going to just introduce the context really for that poem, we're not even going to read the poem today. We're going to understand a little bit more about the context of Romanticism. And we're going to understand the context of the poem that we're going to read, which is The Prelude by William Wordsworth. Um, we have looked at Romanticism before. It was probably um, back in April when we started to look at Romanticism and the Romantic poets. Um, we touched on it with a couple of poems. Um, so because of that, your stars today is going to solely be about Romanticism. Now, some of you will remember these, some of you won't. Um, but I, it's really important that we touch on this at the beginning of the lesson. So these are the four questions that you have. Um, which Romantic poets have we studied so far? Bearing in mind the Romantic period is between 1790 to 1850-ish. Um, what were Romantic poets generally interested in writing about? Which two poems were somewhat influenced by the French Revolution? So which ones were hinting at something to do with the French Revolution? And what happened to the French royal family in the Revolution? OK, so just pause the recording now and have a go at filling in that recall grid. OK, so here are the answers. Um, so the romantic poets that we've studied so far are Shelley um, and Blake. Um, Shelley wrote Ozymandias and Blake wrote London. Um, they have some similarities and some differences. We didn't study those close together, so I'm not sure that you would understand what the um, similarities and differences are between those poets yet. So we're going to have a little look at that today, although it's, it's just something interesting to look at, not particularly essential. Um, so what were romantic poets generally interested in writing about? Um, they were very interested in writing about the relationship between nature and man, but there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, we could go on for weeks about romanticism. Um, we're going to do a little bit more today, um, some of the more important things, but um, what you might remember is the relationship between nature and man so far, and it certainly is relevant to the next poem we're going to study as well. So which two poems were somewhat influenced by the French Revolution? A little bit, um, Ozymandias and London are both written um, around the time when that was happening um, and when the French uh, monarchy were being overthrown. And so th that was certainly influencing their discussion of power in their poems. Um, what happened to the French royal family in the revolution? They were overthrown and they were all executed. Um, some of the romantic poets had been in support of a similar thing happening to the British monarchy. Um, they wanted to change. They wanted to change. They wanted um, something different to happen in the country. So we're going to look at that in a bit more detail today. If you haven't done so already, just can you make sure that you've added, um, you've ticked those points or added to those points if, um, if you need to amend anything. So far, we've studied two Romantic poets. We've studied Shelley and we've studied Blake. Um, and today we're going to study another Romantic poet called William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth is a very, very famous um, uh, Romantic poet. We've got pictures of them at the bottom there. We've got Shelley here, Blake and Wordsworth. Um, obviously not quite similar, but there we go. They're all very different people. Um, you may have heard of William Wordsworth before. He is one of the country's most famous poets. He, like Shelley and Blake, was a romantic poet. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to read a section of an article um, about romantic poets. I'm going to read it with you. Um, it's from the British Library, this article. I've, I've cut bits out of it. So you can find the extensive article if you want to. I'll put the link somewhere. I haven't put it on so far, but I'll put it on when I go and amend the PowerPoint. Um, I haven't edited much out of it, but it is an interesting article to read. Um, and this is basically going to under, uh, enhance your understanding of romanticism and the context of the poems before we look at um, William Wordsworth in a bit more detail. There are considerable, sorry, 
<clears throat> there are considerable similarities between these poets, but there are some differences as well. And just, it's just nice to enhance your understanding of what, what we're doing and why we're doing it. OK, so oh, that's a bit blurry, isn't it? Sorry. This is the first part of the article from um, the British Library. Um, I'm not going to read it all to you. I've highlighted the bits in yellow that are, are important about what we're going to be reading, but, but also some other bits as well that might be of interest. Um, so where is it at the top? Today, the word romantic evokes images of love and sentimentality, but the term romanticism has a much wider meaning. So these poets aren't just um, going to be writing about romance at all. It covers a range of developments in art, literature and music and philosophy spanning the late 18th and early 19th centuries. The Romantics would not have used the term themselves. The label was applied retrospectively from around the middle of the 19th century. So they didn't know they were the Romantics, but later on they've been labelled the Romantics. Um, da, da, da. In England, I'm skipping down. I'm oh, sorry, I can use my cursor, can't I? Sorry, I'm skipping down to here. In England, the Romantic poets were at the very heart of a movement for um, social change, really. The idea that Jean-Jacques Rousseau declared that man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. They were inspired by, the Romantics were inspired by a desire for liberty and they denounced the exploitation of the poor. That means that the Romantics really wanted this idea of freedom and they were really critical and cross about anything where the poor are exploited. Um, we see that, don't we, in London quite a lot, as in the poem London. There was an emphasis on the importance of the individual, a conviction that people should follow ideals rather than impose conventions and rules. The Romantics renounced the rationalism and order associated with the preceding Enlightenment era, stressing the importance of expressing authentic personal feelings. They had a real sense of responsibility to their fellow man. They felt it their duty to use their poetry to inform and inspire others and to change society. So let's summarise those main points here. So the romantic poets were inspired by a desire for freedom. They criticised the exploitation of the poor and they felt a responsibility to their fellow man. They wanted to use their poetry to inform and inspire and change society. So could you pause the video and copy down those four bullet points about romantic poets, please? Okie dokie. The, uh, the next part of the article goes on to talk about um, the poets um, who were romantic poets. So we've studied some of these. So I've highlighted the ones we're studying. So we've got William Blake, William Wordsworth, um, Percy Shelley. Other poets just out of interest would be Coleridge, Keats, Byron. Um, you study some of those, perhaps if you want to go on to study um, A-level English literature. Um, yeah, we don't do that in Langlet, but we do. They do do it in, lit, in A level literature. Um, and so, what are the bits that I wanted to tell you about? So, um, this was a time of physical confrontation. There was a violent rebellion in parts of Europe and the New World, and because of the because the British government were really conscious of all this anarchy, all of the violence going on in the rest of Europe and the new world. Um, the British government at the time were worried about similar outbreaks happening. Now, the early Romantic poets actually were the supporters of the French Revolution. They, they thought it was a, a good thing to happen, hoping that it would bring about political change. They hoped that because of the French Revolution, political change might also happen in, in Britain. However, the bloody reign of terror shocked them profoundly and affected their views. So the brutality of it and the bloodbath caused by the, the war, the French Revolution, um, really uh, upset their feelings about it. So in his youth, William Wordsworth, the poet we're about to read about, he, um, he was drawn into the Republican cause in France until he gradually became disenchanted with the revolutionaries. So at first 
William Wordsworth is a real supporter of the French Revolution, thought it could bring about political change. But then when the when he understood the 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 reign of terror and the bloodbath that happened to be that war, he started to be disenchanted with that and didn't agree with it. So he changed his views. Um, so the Romantics were not in agreement about everything. So not all of the Romantic poets that we've studied will agree. So William Blake, William Wordsworth and Shelley don't all necessarily have the same view of the world. Um, but they did agree on some things. So what they agreed on was that the Romantics highlighted the healing power of the imagination because they truly believed that it could enable people to transcend their troubles and their circumstances. So they felt that the imagination could be a healing power and that um, that was something they all agreed on. So let's just summarise those, those points then. So these are the points that I'd like you to copy down. Early Romantic poets tended to support the French Revolution in the hope that it would bring political change. Wordsworth became gradually disenchanted because of the reign of terror, so he disagreed with it as it went on. And Romantics believed in the healing power of the imagination. So add those to the previous four points from the last slide. Thank you. Pause the um, video. So what else can we tell you about um, Wordsworth then and Blake and how they were different? So Wordsworth was concerned, when he was writing his poetry, he was really concerned about the elitism of earlier poets. Elitism, he, he was concerned that um, it was just going out, the only the poetry was only written for the upper class. Um, it was highbrow language, it was difficult language to understand, and the subject matter and the language made it kind of inaccessible for ordinary people. Ordinary people, the poetry wasn't written for ordinary people. And he was really concerned about that. So he decided that poetry should be composed in the language really spoken by men. So for this reason, he tried to give a voice to those who were oppressed in society. He tried, wanted to write for people uh, who were poor. He wanted to write for soldiers, for fallen women, the insane and children. So his poetry is written in everyday, ordinary language. That's Wordsworth. Blake, uh, another um, romantic poet, he was radical in his political views. Um, the guy who wrote London, he really wanted to uh, address social issues in his poems. We see that, don't we, because he expresses his concerns about the monarchy and the church in the poem London. Um, that's the first things that I wanted to say. Um, the second thing that's quite important is that um, romantic poets believe that children are special because they were innocent and uncorrupted and lots of their poetry involves children. We have the chimney sweep in, in London, don't we? Not, not so much related to um, Ozymandias at all, but certainly in London and the poem we're about to read uh, for Wordsworth. And the romantics were inspired by the environment and encourage people to venture into new territories, both literally and metaphorically. In their writing, they made the world seem like a place with infinite, infinite, unlimited potential. So these are the three points to summarise there. So Wordsworth wanted to compose poetry in the language spoken by men. He didn't want it to be elitist. He just wanted it to be an ordinary, everyday language. Blake, who wrote London, was a radical and used his poetry to express concerns about the monarchy and the church. And the Romantics were inspired by the environment. So pause and just copy those three points down, please. Yeah, I think this is the final. Yeah, this is the final slide from the article from the British Library. So Blake, Wordsworth and Coleridge, uh, Coleridge we don't study, but Blake and Wordsworth were amongst the first generation romantics. They were writing against the black drop of war going on in Europe and the French Revolution. I've told you before that Wordsworth, however, became increasingly conservative in his outlook. When he understood how um, bloody the, the wars were, he found that quite difficult. And so he kind of changed his views and was less political. But then we have something called the second generation romantics, which you will remember from when we studied um, Shelley, who wrote Ozymandias. And they were really critical of um, Wordsworth because they felt like he had basically sold out to the establishment. So 
he had started off being quite um quite political but then as he understood how um brutal war was he then became stepped away from that side of um writing so there was a bit of a divide between the romantics there um but then the difference then to Shelley, Shelley was actually, if you look further down here, the one who wrote Ozymandias, he was nicknamed Mad Shelley. He went to Eton and he was uh, nicknamed Mad Shelley because he um, he was sent down from Oxford uh, for advocating atheism. And basically because he bas he antagonised the establishment by criticising the monarchy and a lot of his poems had that undercurrent of criticism of the monarchy, just like in Ozymandias, he was criticising King George. Um, and so they're, in that way, they're very different. So Shelley was still remained critical in all of his poetry, whereas Wordsworth backed down a little bit and became a little bit more gentle in his poetry. Um, and so this is how they're different. So Wordsworth was a first generation romantic poet writing against a backdrop of war in Europe. When Wordsworth became more conservative after seeing all the bloodshed, other poets like Shelley thought that Wordsworth had sold out. Shelley was different. He continued to antagonise. That means to um, criticise and um, rally against the establishment. The establishment meaning the government and the, um, the monarchy. And he was nicknamed Mad Shelley. So if you can summarise those three bullet points, that would be great. And that's all of your notes on our romantic poets and our collection. I'll just pause the video there and copy those down. Thank you. So all of that stuff on romanticism is just some nice extra bit of information for you to know, to understand how our three romantic poets might be similar and might be different there's just some nice information there that you could use if you were doing a comparison of those poets um it's not absolutely essential it's just some nice information uh so we're going to look at the prelude by william wordsworth um the final thing you're going to do today is watch um mr bruff video about um, the context of the prelude uh, some of the things he's going to talk about will repeat some of the things we've just we've just done, but not much. Um, these are the questions that I'd like you to copy down and answer as you listen to the video. Um, what do you know about Wordsworth early life? This is Wordsworth. What did Wordsworth think about nature? How did he feel about the French Revolution? You know some little bits about that already. The prelude is a section of a longer poem. It's long enough. I'll tell you that it's long enough already. Um, and what is that poem called? How does Wordsworth describe the themes in the poem? For that one, you're just going to copy down what it says on the screen and list the three elements of romanticism presented in the poem. Again, copy that off the screen. You need to watch from the beginning of this YouTube clip um, up to eight minutes. You could stop it there before he starts talking about the actual poem and then answer those questions. Send a photograph of those answers to your teachers. And then in tomorrow's lesson, we will read the poem and understand, understand the story of the poem. Remembering this is going to be in very everyday language. And um, this poem is a little bit of a story about Wordsworth when he was younger. It's autobiographical. OK, thank you very much then. Bye.